Hello folks, apologies if there's a bit of wind noise in this uh, video, but um, we've got a new, or is it an old arrival for you today? It's not the land yacht, it's not the grey goose, it's not the blue barge. The red arrow has returned to the fold. A little bit worse for the wear uh, from when we last saw her, but she is back. Uh, this is the car that is a particular video of when I installed the motor and needed to move her out of the driveway because I had a guy coming to pressure wash the driveway for me, um, which is one of the most watched vi videos on my stupid channel. Um, and she has returned. Um, so for those of you who may not be fami familiar, this was the car that I based my super budget 1000 euro EV conversion build on. And uh, I sold her a few years ago before the house move and all that kind of thing happened. And as far as I know, she's been through a few different um, owners since then. She's now returned here to me. And uh, we've got ourselves a bit of work to do. Well, I got to say, folks, no matter what, it's really good to be back in this car. Um, including the crappy headliner uh, it's good to see that she's very clean inside um, so my seats survived as as well um, as did my fancy m3 door cards so that's always good so bad points um, are kind of twofold uh, one of them I guess is just to do with the car in general and that is that we have a few um, inspection failures for rust uh, door sills which I had previously repaired one of them they didn't do a brilliant job on it but it was structurally sound but the other side has uh, failed on that so that's going to be a project for us I'll probably end up getting replacement sills and just do both sides while I'm I'm at it and the other um, kind of structural bodywork problem that we have is in the back at least one of the uh, trailing arm pockets um, has obviously ro rusted out which I believe is a fairly common problem on these vehicles so what we're going to be doing in the short term uh, is we're going to move this car um, over into a more work friendly spot and we'll get the rear subframe dropped out and i got to dig out my wet sandblasting kit and uh, i want to clean i'm going to clean up that entire area because if there's one bit of rust in there there'll be more so we got to figure out that part and there's a few other kind of little bodywork things uh, that we got to do. Uh, the four tires on the car at the minute are completely shot and the four wheels that are on the car are completely horrible. But the good news is I have some nice 3 Series um, alloys there that should fit this pretty much uh, straight away. And it's just a question of getting four good tires. So that'll be all reasonably straightforward, um, apart from the rust repair, which I've never really done that to that level before. But that's the beauty of this game. There's always something new to learn, and it doesn't necessarily always have to be about some Tesla circuit board. So, we got another project. <laughs> oh, man. 
Well, folks, I gotta say, I was not intending to film my first Red Arrow repair video today. I did try to pop the bonnet here so I could show you what's uh, going on under here for folks that may not be familiar. I realized I couldn't open the friggin' bonnet because the intermediate cable uh, to this would be the left hand side um, bonnet catch has broken so rather than at the very least you know fix this thing no why bother so what I'm gonna do in the intervening period is I'm just take this catch out so that I can close the bonnet uh, without having to have some kind of, I don't know, something coming through the grill here to pop this thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the red arrow is going to need a bit of remedial work. A bit like me. Arrow is a bit like me. Needs all the help she can get. So, yes. Once I get this out, I can turn the camera around. And I can show you what we've got going on in here. Oops. Lovely. There we go. So yeah. This is our first uh, I guess we could call this our first inaugural even. Yes, this is our inaugural repair. So for those of you that may not recall, the Red Arrow is equipped, equipped with a DC drive system featuring our lovely blue forklift motor in there and our DIY controller and box, which has had a few um, let's say additions along the way. So the question immediately springs to mind is, once we get the bodywork stuff and all the general purpose car repairs done, do we keep that DC drive system in there or do we upgrade? Alrighty, so welcome to the boot. Uh, oh. Went ahead up here, um, just stripped out some wiring that I assume had been used for a, a charger or a DC DC at some point. Um, just pulled that out and tied down the, the top cover here properly. At some point, the car got a hit here on the front, uh, a little bit on the bonnet as well, but hopefully, we can just knock that back out. Well, anyway, I'm gonna try and get her moving because ideally what we wanna do is move the truck out of here, put the truck in front of the Moscow and move the red arrow into that corner, which would be kind of obvious, hopefully, why soon if we're doing our wet blasting. Now, uh, so obviously our batteries are gone and that's okay. Uh, our 12 volt battery uh, is gone as well. Um, so that happened at some point in the plan. Uh, looks like battery terminals were just replaced with ordinary um, <coughs> autom automotive uh, terminals. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a lithium battery to go in here at the minute, but just for moving the car around, I do have uh, just a lead acid here. I'm gonna see, um, it actually does still have my original battery strap in there. I'm gonna just push that down flat uh, we'll get the lead acid in here, we'll get some 12 volt power into the car and uh, before we do any HV stuff and we'll see, uh, yeah I'm just going to push that down for the minute, it's only Galvaban just wrapped in a bit of uh, fibre tape, so that's my negative, so let's grab that and see if we can just uh, manhandle it in there, there we go, alright so there's our negative anyway. I'm gonna go ahead, get this battery connected. Uh, we'll come back, um, see then if we have any power. 
All right, so that 12 volt battery's in there. We didn't get any bangs. We connected it up. Let's jump in the car now. I better move that box of screws. I'm not gonna move the car or anything, but I would forget. Uh, let's jump in here. See if anything's working. All right, well, can't exactly check the stereo, can we? Oh yeah, okay, the dome light works. So that's good. There's power on. Um, all right, let's see what happens here if I put the key on. Whoa, windscreen wipers are on. All right, okay. Uh, let's go for key on. All right. I think I hear the power steering pump spinning up. Uh, instrumentation's on, the fan controller's on. Uh, I remember how to use this, do I? Oh boy, oh, here we go. Amps volts, which is zero at the minute, which is correct. Ah, we got power steering. All right, obviously we don't have any uh, you know, pre-charge or anything going on there, so that's fine. All right, uh, side lights? Yeah, I think they're working. Okay, clock's working. Uh, let's see about some HV then. So, obviously, we need some kind of a battery <coughs> so we can see if the car is going to move, because obviously driving it under its own power is a lot easier than trying to push it or tow it or do any other garbage. So, you uh, regular viewers will recognize this thing. This is our Ampera pack, or most of it anyway, minus the um, combusto piece um, that we had out of our um, Panzer. So the good news is, um, been sitting out here in the rain for three months hasn't gone on fire again. So I'm gonna say that the moisture theory is uh, hopefully busted. But in any event, I've stripped these off, uh, cleaned them, and I've given them a solid coating of this conformal coating all over here, including into those horrible things there because the internet is always right, even when I'm wrong. Yeah, so anyway, these two here, this one's about 100 volts, this one's about 120. So the plan is, I'm gonna haul these over to the car and we'll see um, if we can stick these in the boot, because it's been wired now for boot only uh, batteries. And we'll see if we can get these in and we'll see if our traction system is gonna power up. All right. Got these two battery modules in here. Got a filament lamp hooking them up. I'm gonna set you folks up here. Keep an eye on that filament lamp for me. I'm gonna go ahead and start up the car. And what we should see is that lamp glow for a couple of seconds and then go really dim. What we shouldn't see is the lamp glowing constantly. If we do, it means we got a problem. So, at least if I can get this silly camera tripod to mount on top of my battery, everything will be just fine. There we go. All right. Keep an eye on that for me, folks. Or crank her up. Alrighty, battery's in there. Got a 125 amp breaker on it now. So let's uh, see. Hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed and words to that effect. Let's see what happens in here. Hopefully, no explosions. We're in neutral. Put a key on. 
So let's see. This thing here. Yeah, I got some volts. Let's go for pre-charge. Okay. Okay, attempt number three. Let's check and see that we've got volts. Yes, I have volts. Now, I did try and spin the motor earlier. It did spin. The tachometer is not working, of course. Surprise, surprise. All right, let's see if we can drive. Oh yeah, we're driving. Red Arrow's driving, folks. So I had a sleep on it and had a bit of a think. I think I've got a new plan. So what we have here are the two motors from the front of a Mitsubishi Outlander. Not sure which is the motor and which is the generator. Uh, but what I'm thinking is, do we replace our DC motor with one of these ones. Uh, I've seen some folks over on the Open Inverter Forum use the generator. So whichever that one is, seems to be the motor of choice and figures anything from 75 to 85 kilowatts. And considering that our 1.7 diesel that was originally in the car was 90 brake horsepower, then one of these uh, will be a nice fit as we've also got over here do do do, do over on a shelf got the front inverter in here now it's a little bit big but not too uh, I've got the wiring harness and all that this is super easy to control just power and can I think someone had already written a module for the VCU. So we'd just be using one, obviously, of the inverters. There's two in that uh, for our motor or generator motor. And as far as I know, these are still, you know, these are still a good budget choice, which we do want to try and maintain that um ideal with the red arrow redux let's call this uh so one of those motors which you can actually pick up you know they're not heavy at all um you know give, give, give us 60 70 80 kilowatts uh so that'll give us a nice drive train then i'm thinking volkswagen p have uh, 3.6 kilowatt charger so single phase you know pretty low power but nice and cheap be about 150 euros or something like that throw that in with a type 2 socket rather than that industrial plug that i had on the thing um that gives us a charger haven't figured out a dc dc converter well, one option that we could go with is if we pop over here beside the Panzer, which I have to update you on as well, we could go with a Gen 3 Prius inverter to drive that Outlander motor. And that, if we 
Now we could parallel up MG1 and MG2 in there. We then have a DC-DC in this uh, package and that that's again a good budget option. So that's a possibility. Uh, so we'll either go with this guy or we'll go with this guy for an inverter. I was gonna go with when I was for the car first turned up uh, yesterday, I was thinking, oh, you know, we'll go with the IS300 system. And then I was thinking, oh, you know, we could go with the BMW 330e for the E90. But I'm thinking, let's leave the E90 alone and leave it with the IS300 stuff. And we'll go with the, we'll go with the, um, well, one of these anyway, whichever is the generator. Uh, we'll go with one of these as our drivetrain. Um, so I just couple up again to the five-speed manual in there, and we're good to go. Now, in terms of battery, then, we've revitalized our Ampera pack here, sealed up all of this here, which after last night's rain seems to be um, behaving. You see, that's our dead module there. So that and the two modules that I've in the car at the minute that we just put in yesterday for moving it uh, give us uh, probably about 320 volts, something like that. So those two modules in there and the other module, because about 320 volts um with the three modules minus the burnt out bit uh which would give us a nice um probably like i don't know 10 12 kilowatt hours something like that i don't know maybe more maybe 15 14 15 we'll know when we try it so that would cover the battery situation folks um so yeah, that would cover the battery. That would get us a battery and the drivetrain and the charger. As I said, if we go with the DDD Prius inverter, that covers the DC-DC as well. But we'll see how we go with that. Uh, may or may not, we'll see what other DC-DC options that might be hanging around out there. Um, Fast charging then, because I'll be putting the Zombieverter VCU in here anyway, because we kind of want to do our modules for analog dash and stuff like that. So it'd be a good vehicle for doing that kind of stuff with. Um, fast charging then, I think the easiest way to do it is probably the same as we've done it in the E39 here, uh, is just go with our Chidemo uh, tailpipe here because uh, that's basically intrinsic in the VCU anyway. Uh, so we'd only have to get a socket and a couple of contactors uh, for fast charging. So, yeah, we'd be still kind of keeping ourselves in the... We'd be still kind of staying within the budget ethos, I think, that originally started this project. Uh, but bringing it up to a little bit more modern. So that's about where we're at, folks. Um, so I'm thinking, like I said, we need to get rid of the DC system anyway, just because the motor is, you know, that would need to be at the very minimum stripped down, have the commutator turned and the brushes bedded in again um on that so i could do that um but it kind of feels it, it kind of feels a little bit too old school um at the minute it wouldn't be relevant to folks today uh so i think we're gonna go with one of these with this front generator motor from the outlander decision then is whether we go with the OEM 
inverter or the Prius Gen 3. The Prius Gen 3, as I said, gives me the benefit of I get the DC-DC converter for free, basically, in there. Um, so that's drivetrain. We go with the Volkswagen PHEV charger, 3.6 kilowatts. We've got that worked out. Uh, so we'll write a module for the VCU to run that, and that'll run the charging port and all, so we don't need to worry then about, you know, no matter what, um, PWM or whatever, the charger takes care of all of that for us. Um, so that's that. Uh, I'll probably go with Chidemo, as I said, just because we get it with the VCU anyway. Um, for fast charging, I think CCS on a budget build at the minute is still a little bit uh, of a bridge too far, though there is some very good work being done over on the forum by some very talented folks working on, um, I guess, ground up CCS rather than my approach of finding an OEM module. I still have the Volkswagen CCS charge controller. Uh, so I've got to work on that as well. Uh, hopefully now this year I get a bit more work done on these Volkswagen chargers. But anyway, don't, don't go off. Stay on message, Damien. Elon here is trying to edge me out of the picture. Look at him, he's pushing me, saying, put me in the Moskvo, Damien. Put me in the Moskvo. I want to spin. I know, Elon. Just if you weren't such a pain in the neck... It's like, make me spin, Damien, and then throw every possible weirdness at me along the way. But anyway, a robin has just flown into the barn. Hello, robin. So, anyway, um, that's where we're going to go. So, folks, let me know in the comments what you think. Think. Am I insane? Obviously. Uh, but what you think of this plan? Is it a good plan, bad plan? Any suggestions uh, that you may have, let me know. Um, anyone does any experience doing E36 rust repairs, sills, and those, um, what's the name of them, trailing arm pockets on the back end? Let me know if there's any tips or tricks um, that you would recommend because I've never done I've just you know welded little patches and stuff like, like that I've never gotten into something as complex as this so I'm sure to make a terrible mess out of it but I'll be sure to video it as well uh, to um, you know get maxi clicks and make a fool out of myself so that's it I ramble on for long enough I don't know what I'm going to be able to edit out of all this stupidity uh, but in any event, folks, um, we'll see you back in the next semi-exciting episode of The Red Arrow Returns. And until then, be absolutely certain that you do not like, share, or subscribe to this stupid channel. Okay, so thumbs down, because otherwise, I'm going to want to do more of this stuff. Uh, I got I got already too many cars here, so we don't want any of that. Also, whatever you do, super important because this is really expensive. Don't support me financially on Patreon or PayPal or any other way. Don't donate parts to me or that because that's bad. Because then I'll reverse engineer them and put them in cars and <laughs> sell the knowledge to the highest bidder. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so anyway. Um, until next time, happy repair panel purchasing.